cry out with joy to God, all the earth. O oh, sing to the glory of his name. O oh, render him glorious praise. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, as we enter these sacred mysteries, let us do so by first calling to mind our sins. Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward with confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You deny the Holy and Righteous One and ask for that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. Lord, let your face shine on us. Lord, let your face shine on us. When I call, answer me, O my just God. You who re relieve me when I am in distress, have pity on me and hear my prayer. Lord, let your face shine on us. Know that the Lord does wonders for his faithful one. The Lord will hear me when I call upon him. Lord, let your face shine on us. O Lord, let the light of your countenance shine upon us. You put gladness into my heart. Lord, let your face shine on us. As soon as I lie down, I fall peacefully asleep. For you alone, O Lord, Bring security to my dwelling. Lord, let your face shine on us. A second reading is a reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way that we can be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Lord Jesus, open the scriptures to us. Make our hearts burn while you speak to us. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. My people perish for lack of vision. So declared the Lord through his prophet, Hosea. Everyone desires a vision for their lives. Without a vision, the horizons of our life become narrow, limited, distant, and shallow. We neither lack, we either lack direction in life or pursue potentially destructive paths. God understands this desperate need of the human heart. And so to give us a vision of who we are and the goal of our immortal destiny, the Father sent his only Son to show us how to love and raised him from the dead to show us how to live. He sent his only Son to show us how to love and raised him from the dead to show us how to live. Seen by eyewitnesses in his resurrected state, in this gospel we've just heard proclaimed from the Gospel of Luke, Christ grants the vision, the world of vision of the call, the dignity of the transfigured state and the manifest glory that we will assume in lives that imitate the obedient love of Christ to the Father. For the resurrection of Christ, glorified in the obedience to the Father's will, grants us hope that the promise of our redemption is tangible. It is through our obedience to the commandments of God that we continue his redemptive work and grow in forcible stature of the resurrection. Listen to that again. It is through our obedience to the commandments of God that you and I continue his redemptive work and grow in a forcible stature of the resurrection. His resurrection has subdued hell, opened the gates of heaven, and has given us, through his conquering spirit, a participation in his victory. We enter and remain in the resurrection of Christ and in that power through the sacraments and are sustained in its power through worship, prayer, and works of faith accomplished in love 
And by your obedience to the commandments of God, we remain in his love. We grow in knowledge of him and in the ways of God. This is the beauty of the commandments and obedience to the commandments of God. For our second reading proclaims to us today, whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. And that more than any other definition is the life of a Christian abiding in the resurrection, meaning the love of God is truly perfected in us. Perhaps more than any other definition of the life of a Christian would be that the love of God is truly perfected in us. Through the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, we are constantly being sanctified according to the pattern of his own passion, death, and resurrection. We repeat that living reality at each and every Mass we celebrate. By dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored our life. Therefore, as Christians, our death is to sin, and our rising is to life in God by grace. Both by dying and rising, we participate in Christ's mastery over sin and death and ascend to possess the stamina accorded to the resurrection. At each Eucharist, you and I taste the incorruptible body of the risen Lord, and when we partake of the Eucharist, we possess the hope of the resurrection. Listen to that again. At each Eucharist, we taste the incorruptible body of the risen Lord, and when we partake of the Eucharist, you and I possess the hope of the resurrection. We are granted a vision of our glory, our destiny, our calling, not just after death, but here and now on earth. For after his resurrection, Christ did not return to his earthly life. And so we who have died with him in baptism and raised with him in the same sacrament of baptism should not return to our former ways of life, but set our sights on things above. In this way, we are continually being transformed by his death and resurrection. In this way, you and I are glorified by living deeply in his resurrection power. In this time of Easter, where we celebrate his victory over sin and death through the triduum that we just celebrated. Now in this Easter season, we are celebrating his resurrection. and We want to bathe ourselves in that resurrection power. We want to receive that power more and more in our lives. And in our readings today, we are hearing we do that through prayer and worship, but also to be people who live the commandments of God and continue to grow in perfection. For as the Lord said through the prophet Jeremiah, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. God wants to, to give us a vision. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord. So let us, this Easter season, continue to bathe in this resurrection power. Let us not perish for lack of vision that Christ has given us through his passion and death and his resurrection. For the, visit, for the vision of the resurrected Lord is before us, and that is the vision of our life. as people living and celebrating the resurrection power of Christ that we participate in, let us make a profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our Father hears our prayers, in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we offer these, our intercessions. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops, priests, and the whole people of God, that we may be witnesses to proclaim the fullness of gospel truth. In word and deed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church, as a keeper of God's word and commandments, may lead others to repentance, conversion, and freedom found in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the people of God may continue in praise, worship, and rejoice in thanksgiving this Easter season for God's work of salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from loss of employment, illness, loneliness, sorrow, and addictions, may seek God's providence and deliverance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are victims of violence and exploitation, may know the healing and providence of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And in recognition of the current events in our local community, we pray that St. Gerard's, a multiracial community rooted in faith and redeemed equal members of God's family of believers, may be an example to the wider community of how peoples rooted in grace mutual understanding and social interaction may not only thrive but receive one another as brothers and sisters. For the betterment of our families, communities, culture, and nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our fellow parishioners who have asked for our prayers, and especially for the people of the parish for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they know the vibrant mercy of God and that their loved ones may be renewed in faith, strengthened by hope and consoled in love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we come as intercessors, members of the body of Christ, interceding before your throne in the name of Jesus. Hear our prayers and move in our midst and that are our families, friends, our community, all through the power of the Spirit, that all may come to know you as Lord, God, and Savior. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord, I am not worthy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ had to suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead. In his name, repentance and remission of sins must be preached to all the nations. Alleluia. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those who are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. A quick uh, note here for a Mass announcement. As more and more people are getting vaccinated and returning to Mass, of course, we encourage you to do so. We also need more volunteers for various liturgical ministries. If you go on our website under Ministries and scroll down to Liturgy and Worship, you can sign up and serve one another with various different ministries. Also, for those of you who are still at home but uh, would love to receive communion physically, on Wednesdays at 10 a.m., every Wednesday, we are distributing Holy Communion in the front of the church. We have inclement weather, if it's rainy or such, we'll come to your car, Father Joseph or myself. Uh, if the weather is good, uh, please come out of your cars, wear, wear masks, we'll be socially distanced and distribute Holy Communion to you. God bless you all. <laughs>